What's a relatively unknown technological invention that will have a huge impact on the future? Gene therapy is no longer science fiction. My girlfriend got Lux Turner surgery and the results have been amazing. She used to be unable to see it all at night and now she can guide herself without a cane. More treatments like that are going to keep coming and be standard before we realize it. Biotech science in general is undergoing a massive and amazing sea change right now. Gene therapy is a huge wave that's just getting started even now. And there are so many related applications that are really exciting. We are swiftly getting to the point of being able to edit safely. We can already teach your own modified immune cells to attack your cancer and things like CAR T. And the field is really still in its infancy yet. Imagine fighting cancer effectively without the side effects of chemo. We will look back someday and think chemo was barbaric. Apparently that's called seizure potential and is exactly how they confirmed I had epilepsy and that it was triggered by a head injury when I was a baby slash toddler. But also, I was having minor seizures that my egg didn't pick up, either, in my 24-hour ones or my 5-day inpatient one. It didn't catch my reaction to a very specific strobe speed slash pattern either, which is unfortunate because I know I'm reactive to a certain kind of strobing but because I tend not to be able to remember very well after, I don't know what type to be avoiding, or covering my eyes for, or being warned about. Mine required me to hit the button and mark when I thought I was having a seizure or felt one coming on which is probably both for the purposes of marking where a seizure might be more clearly, and for marking it in case it's not a seizure but something else so that they can examine it more closely. I think it's possible that many seizures, depending on type, may not show changes above our seizure potential but if it was a tonic-clonic seizure I'm fascinated. Cars haven't gotten cheaper, instead the competition has largely been in fancier cars at the same price point. Compared to a 1990 model for the same, inflation-adjusted, price. Frame design and crash performance, anti-crash technologies, e.g., radar cruise control and braking assist, lane keeping, blind spot monitoring, etc., more and better airbags, backup and side cameras, parking assist systems, fuel efficiency, emissions, engine power for a given displacement and drivetrain weight, automatic transmissions, traction and stability control, simulated digital limited slip differentials using differential braking in an open diff, lighter, cheaper more reliable, AWD in more cars, improvements in tire compounds, general improvements in suspension design, alloy wheels as standard, less unsprung weight, and a lot more I'm forgetting. Then also infotainment systems with a map GPS, heated slash cooled seats and steering wheels, powered trunk hatches, air conditioners as standard, powered windows as standards, remote unlock fobs as standard, voice command systems, automatic windshield wipers, etc. Plus cars have generally gotten bigger for a given price. Fair warning, this is all speculation, but when it comes to projects like this and other applications, it usually boils down to have a large upfront capital cost making the long-term benefits not really worth much in the long run. For instance, if this method can save 20% of the annual water cost, but costs 200% more, you won't see a return on investment for 10 years, which is hard to justify especially if in another few years there is another breakthrough that will lead to a 40% increase in efficiency. There is also the downside to making a more complicated system requires more complicated and costly maintenance. The company might give you a service warranty, but for how long, and for what extra cost? What happens if that company goes out of business and you can't maintain it yourself? That's a big risk that people have to factor into upgrades like this. I'm excited for when that market starts to emerge though. I saw another company doing a hydroponics project with like 98% recycled materials as substrate and it reduced water consumption significantly. Hopefully it all culminates in another type of agricultural revolution. I'm excited for indoor vertical farming to really take off. Having that available in cities, where populations are growing the most, is a no-brainer. Fewer pesticides, year-round growing, significantly reduced transportation are all major wins. While not an unknown technology, Deepfake is still in its infancy and it terrifies me. We already live in a time when people take irrefutable video evidence and somehow find ways to rationalize away what they are seeing. People don't listen to science anymore, truth has become frighteningly subjective. Think of all the videos of police shootings slash political scandals slash whistleblowers slash assassinations slash and more. Now, add in a technology that has the potential to create doubt about the validity of what we are seeing. It's the perfect excuse, and all people will need to kill that last little bit of logical thought deep in their brain. It is a perfect tool to create chaos and discord. Politicians will use it to create confusion and doubt. To sow fear, 
create false narrative and delegitimize their opponents, or to cast doubt on crimes and acts they have committed. Something that was once impossible to rationalize away will become yet another misinformation tool and an engine to sow doubt. Surprised to find this so far down. This is the first thing I thought of. Besides DNA evidence, I feel like video evidence is our most reliable. With deepfakes, our entire judicial system will have to adjust, and that's terrifying. How do you know what to trust? You could be fed anything and not know if it's true or not. That's some black mirror shit right there. Image forensics is already a thing and edited video with 1000s of frames is going to be a harder sell than a Photoshop. In the long term they may get good enough to fool even the judicial system, but within the next decade or so I'd be more concerned about the ability to construct false narratives on media. Even if forensics later proves a video false huge numbers of people will just believe what they saw. Solid state physicist, electrochemist here. Worked on solid polymer electrolyte lithium ion cells at Stanford, Berkeley, and Bosch. Not happening affordably in the near future. I researched on cells that allow for lithium metal, Li, as the anode which has 6 to 7 times the energy density of lithium graphite, Li 1C6. Note that this is just the anode which takes up less than one third of the total active cell. Further, using lithium metal as a non-passivated, active component is ludicrously hard to do, due to its insane reactivity. Basically, the crystal really wants to reach the cathode so it builds dendrites, little crystal arms, that penetrate the solid polymer. Plus the diffusion and hence rate of the electrolyte is orders of magnitude worse than normal lithium polymer cells. Actually lithium ion or batteries that store energy through a difference of chemical potential between two materials, cathode and anode, are severely limited to the view suitable materials we have found and materials science and chemistry of the active materials have progressed little to none since John B. Goodenough's proof of concept and Sony's mass production in the 90s. Fuel cells, supercapacitors and magnetic storage are actually approaches with much more potential gain in power and energy density through research as they don't have the material limitations in the same sense. On top of this, LICs, especially solid state, for example solid polymer, type cells suffer from a wide array of other problems. I researched on this field extensively and found out some cool stuff during my master's thesis, that you can look up on this publication. https colon slash slash pubs dot rsc dot org slash n slash content slash article landing slash 2019 slash ta slash c9 ta 01720h slash unauth hash exclamation mark div abstract. I also have some really cool electron microscopy and nano x-ray CT images of LIC cathodes if anyone is interested. Did you know that they have developed implants which can grow with you? Meaning that kids with faulty heart valves or damaged organs which require a synthetic element can undergo just one surgery as they're young and never have to have further surgeries for replacement as they grow. My housemaid is a chemical engineer and she told me all about it I thought it was interesting. Edit, holy shit woke up, I'm from Melbourne to 54k likes. Glad you all found it interesting. I wish it was something I knew from my own field but unfortunately lawyers don't come up with technology. Did you know that since last year no conveyancing has been done by paper, in Victoria, it's all done on electronic conveyance software? Not as interesting but it is actually a huge thing for lawyers. Edit 2, a lot of you are asking about my housemate needing to share a house as a chemical engineer, I'm in law and our other housemate is in architecture. We live in Melbourne together by choice. We're in our 20s, in Melbourne at least it is strange to not live with housemates in your 20s. It's considered odd. Which funnily enough is strange to her because she is from Sweden and it's much more common to move straight in with partners or even on your own there. Also, did you know that in Sweden, in their bigger cities, Stockholm, Uteborg etc. they have waiting lists for flats? You put your name down and your rank on that list will determine your priority for a flat. Och för svensk folk. Jagel Skarl HC, Ice Hockey. I manage a portfolio of technologies at a large research university so I'll give you my opinion on a few of the most underrated yet promising in terms of impact. Dot biologically derived electrodes slash batteries. Dot agricultural robotics, pickers, sorters, computer visions for identification, phenotypes for example, etc. Dot advanced nanocomposite materials for magnetic devices. .ai slash ml algorithms for medical imaging. Dot brain to computer interfaces. Dot sensors galore, I can't expound too much here for various reasons. Dot .ai slash ml algorithms for traffic management. Dot self-driving vehicles are still underrated in my opinion. Dot autonomous drone swarm technologies, applies to manufacturing, emergency rescue, mapping, etc. 
Various carbon nanotube technologies. Emotion and identification recognition through voice, gate, etc. using AI slash ML algorithms. Those are some of the biggest ones I've seen so far, but much of their success depends on finding the right business model to commercialize the technology and some of those will inherently die on the vine. ZK Snark AS, Zero Knowledge Succinct Non-Interactive Argument of Knowledge. They are a new cryptographic primitive that is much more powerful than anything we've discovered before, and they are getting a lot of traction lately in the cryptography community. And it's especially important in this age of privacy and security concerns. Imagine a world where you can prove you are financially stable to rent a new property without having to hand over a bank statement or a job offer letter. Or a world where you can apply for a job based solely on your credentials, without revealing any information about yourself, including race, gender, or even name, while still providing a guarantee to the company that the information on your resume is 100% true. Or even a world in which prove to the government that I paid my taxes correctly without even telling them who I am or how much I make or how much money I paid. These are all impossible today, but ZK Snark AS are a new cryptographic primitive which will make these things a reality in, I believe, the rather near future, despite the fact that most people don't even know about them. In fact, not only can they do all of this, but they can do all of this in a way that is cheap and scalable, meaning that I can check a cryptographic proof in seconds or less on a regular old phone, or maybe even a Raspberry Pi. I won't be surprised if, in a few years, ZK Snark AS will become a standard security protocol in browsers, and will be the next layer of security on top of HTTPS. Soon we will have browsers with significantly more powerful security and privacy features that we didn't even know were possible a few years ago. Diamond Nuclear Voltaic, DNV, Nano Diamond Batteries That Can Last Years Without Charging Very, simply put, it recycles and converts nuclear waste radiation into electricity making it environmentally friendly, green energy. Only a fraction of the nuclear waste is required to produce a single power cell. It's not harmful. It produces less radiation than the radiation produced by the human body. It also produces no heat. Its flexible structure can be used in many applications. Also, because it relies on nuclear radiation for power, it can last a lifetime. Think about that. It can be applied to small technology, i.e. smartphones, laptops and tablets, to major technology, automotive, aerospace, and medical. Imagine pacemakers that never need changing. It would also propel us further in quantum computing. I'm thrilled about this. It's a freaking game changer. Research team, https colon slash slash www.prescounter.com slash 2018 slash 04 slash meet inventor nuclear waste powered slash. Cool article, https colon slash slash www.wired.com slash story slash our radioactive diamond batteries a cure for nuclear waste slash. Company I heard about that's building on this research, https colon slash slash ndb.technology slash applications slash. We haven't invented it yet. If you study the last three big technological leaps forward, they were all preceded by discovering a new, denser, method of energy storage. Coal in the steam engine lead to the industrial revolution. Oil in the combustion engine lead to the modern revolution. Fission and water reactors lead to another energy revolution. We have the technology for cleaner energy via solar and wind. It's not carbon neutral, because you never get the energy out of the thing that goes into making it, but it sure can put a dent in carbon emissions, so it's better than nothing, edit, apparently I'm wrong on this. I'm skeptical, because of all the propaganda and activism surrounding the issue from both sides, but there you go, and it doesn't change my point that something is better than nothing. That being said, the sun isn't always shining and the wind isn't always blowing. What we lack is the capacity to store it at a 99.9% .9 efficiency rate. We need a storage slash battery revolution before the next big energy revolution is possible. Maybe they'll figure out a super dense and efficient battery out of graphene or carbon nanotubes. Who knows? Another stopgap would be some sort of thorium or liquid sodium reactor. But we lack the will to fund the research, ERC it hasn't been scaled beyond proof of concept before, and haven't come up with a way to get rid of the waste, yet.